right. Welcome to Life Lessons Live. Let's talk edition with the crew. It's good to be back in the studio once again. Good to see Thanks. these faces. And uh, those of you that will be joining in, listening in, or may even hear this at a later date, we thank God for you. We don't take you for granted listening. Um, we believe here that conversations birth new seasons, and we certainly want you to join in that conversation. You can do that by commenting in the comment section on Facebook or emailing us. Um, we certainly will get back with you. That's for sure. Um, this isn't a, this is a no judgment zone. We're not here being critical or judging anybody. We're here having a conversation. Yes. We're here to talk about life, real life. Um, and we want to hear from you. Your opinion matters. Uh, we want to hear from every generation, um, those around the world, people in different situations, and different circumstances. Um, I believe that through the compassion and the love of God, we can all glean from one another, learn something from one another, and we can grow together. OK, okay. so listen, I want these guys to introduce themselves to you as we get ready to talk about embracing change on today. Uh, I'm excited about that because change is happening everywhere. But uh, let these guys introduce themselves to you and let you know who they are. And um, then we'll move on from there. Um, I'm Charlotte Polk right here in Tupelo, Mississippi. <laughs> I love the children. And I like to say that I, um, the kids, they boss me. They so, boss you. Okay. They boss me. <laughs> and so I am a youth advisor at People's Community Baptist Church. And I'm just glad to be here, y'all. It's been a, um, a long time coming. I'm glad to be back. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Stephanie? Hey, family. Welcome, welcome. I'm Stephanie Monique right here in Tupelo, Mississippi, um, educator, mentor, uh, and a whole bunch of other things. Most importantly, just a, a learner and a, a, a worshiper and a servant for the body of Christ. All right. And then I agree with you. Sister Charlie, we want to just uh, send our love to you and your family. Condolences Thank on the passing so of your father. Um, you know, it's such a, uh, a, a a great thing when your dad was a man of God. You know, he's a man of God. Mm -hmm. And so with that, there is some some uh, some peace in that, you know, and he has a legacy in you all. And so we just send our condolences out and love to you and your family. And we're here for you all. And I know you got people all around um, Tupelo and this this and your family members all over the, the country that love you and love you. Lo you guys love each other. And so that's what gets us all through everything that we, we have to face in this life and our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, yeah. again, we just want to acknowledge that and, and honor him um, in that and honor your family with that. OK. Before Thank we move on anything, I believe that was appropriate. Thank Amen. Thank you so much, Bishop. Thank you so much. Yeah. I don't want to cry, but you already know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sis. <laughs> Absolutely. I said I, I, said I wasn't going to say nothing because I, I was right there with you. Even when we were talking before we came on, I could hear it. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We love you so much. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 And, you know, love, love is a, uh, is a force, you know, it's a force. And I don't care what nobody says when, when you can love on somebody and share love with someone, uh, it makes a difference. It makes a difference, a hug, a smile, mm -hmm. a, uh, letting someone know that you care, um, thinking about you, you know, those types of things, all that stuff is important. I, I believe, uh, who is that? This is love makes the world go round. Mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it does. Yeah, yeah, it keeps things moving. It keeps things moving. So it really does. Amen. And that's who we are. Now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I said that's exactly what the world needs right now. Every yeah. day. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I'm reminded of, you know, that that's the second of the greatest commandments is to love our neighbors. We love ourselves. Exactly. You better you know? teach, Bishop. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's let's keep the main thing the main thing. Let's let's, keep let's get thing. back to the basics. Let's yes. get back to when we cared uh, about if I had a few peas and you got some peas. Uh, okay, you know, if if <laughs> if if we we gonna kill a hog, then you got some meat too. Yes. You know, if if we need to work on your tractor, we're gonna all get together and work on your tractor, and make it happen. Um, 
you know, just checking on one another. Uh, I, I, I didn't understand when I was a small child, you know, when my grandmother would tell us it would, it would be hot. You know how it is in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. You know how those how those uh, uh, roads that are, are asphalt in. Uh, well, at one time it was gravel, but Ooh. then when they made it asphalt, that made it even hotter. And when it's 105 outside and the humidity is hot and, and, and we got to walk down the street to take something to someone or go check on someone and all of that, uh, you know, I, I didn't understand it all at that time. You kind of get a little, little attitude, but you do it oh, because okay. you're told to and you respect it. But now I know that that was just love. Love goes the extra mile. Yes. yes. It goes the extra mile. It doesn't mind being inconvenienced. And love don't make excuses. Mm -mm. It don't make excuses. Love makes it happen. It you know, does. It makes it happen. Yeah. yeah, it makes it happen. It makes it happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh and, and just going with that, love will change a thing. Amen. It changed me. Mm -hmm. You know, knowing the love oh. of God, experiencing the love of God changed my heartaches, my disappointments, my 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 foolishness, uh made me want to pour love back out. You know, I don't do this thing living for God, uh, serving the Lord. As Stephanie said, I'm a servant, serving the Lord. I don't do that grudgingly. I do that out of love and compassion. And uh, it, it gives me joy. That's a beautiful thing. It gives thing. me great joy. Yeah. 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 Lord, yeah, yeah. This is my due diligence. It's due diligence. Wow. Man, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's not a chore. You know, you do it because you want to. It's a desire to please yes. the Father, to please God. Okay. I, I agree. 100%. 100%. It made me better. Yes. Amen. It made yes. me better. And I know it would make anyone better if they can just open up to it. Amen. You know, you can open up to it and uh, that will bring about change. Yes. So embracing change, let's dig mm -hmm. in a little bit. Change is to be made different or to do things differently, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and sometimes change isn't hard to, it's hard to embrace. Um, you know, sometimes it's because of fear, sometimes because of what you don't know, all of those types of things. And to embrace it means, embrace means to receive gladly or eagerly or to accept it willingly. Mm -hmm. One 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 of the definitions talking about to hug it, to pull it close to your bosom. Mm. You know, <laughs> to adopt something that's different, to bring that into your life. Um and that's when change begins to happen. Um and so can you all see this and and uh change is always happening. Whether we 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 change or not, change is always happening. Mm -hmm. uh, Tomorrow is going to be uh, April the 29th. Wow. I could be stuck in today, but tomorrow is coming. Mm -hmm. You know, and change has happened. Uh, I'll be a day older, whether I embrace it or not. You know, <laughs> whether or not I took it full advantage of the time that I had. You know, uh, did I did I did I learn anything today, you know, so that I can e embrace what's coming on tomorrow? You know, sometimes the lack of preparation affects or keeps us from embracing change. Right. One of my mentors, um, uh, Sam Chan, says the quality of our preparation determines the quality of our performance. And uh, when we don't understand that change is happening all the time. And if we don't prepare for it and be ready to accept it, um, we don't many times make the progress that we need to make or have the experience that we need to have with what's changed. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to throw that out there. What are some of the things you can think about as always changing? Oh, wow, Bishop, that's good. Um, the world is always changing. First of all, the world is always revolving. It's always moving. So change uh, is happening. Um, we're growing. Uh, you know, you're aging, you know. So those things are, are constantly always changing. It could be policies, you know, information that we learn of. 
Okay. Uh, that that comes to us. Okay. What about people? People change. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. Okay. And in our preschool world, the kids are developmentally changing. Okay. Social, okay. emotional development, um, they are changing constantly. And so we have to adapt to their mm. changes. And um, a lot of times we don't like to do that. So I think when people come into agreement zone, even having kids, mm. everybody kind of needs to be on the same page because you're going to go into some changes. Okay. Um, physically, mentally, and um, just collectively in general. Um, and that's, you know, when you bind um, relationships together to have children, mm -hmm. you need to be on the same page because that's going to bring a big change. And I think we have uh, gotten away from how we are raising our families. We're just, everybody's just doing whatever. And the okay. change, <laughs> it's like, we need to, um, we need to, to uh, go back to our father. You know, uh -huh. our, we need to repent. And, and renew our minds for this change that's about to take place. That's just me. You know, I, I, it's so much, you know, that you can go through even in a, a couple of months, mm -hmm. just a couple of months. Mm -hmm. It could be a big difference could happen. A big things could, could, could totally look different, mm -hmm. you know, in a month, it could look different tomorrow, you know, exactly. it could look different tomorrow. And as, as you said, have we gotten away? Have we changed from the source of where we drew our morals and our ethics and um, how we dealt with family and, you know, caring for people and all of that? Have we gotten to the point where it's real, real selfish, um, you know, uh, you know, as you said, going back to the father, methods change. It's the 21st century. We know it's 2021, but <laughs> but the word of God tells us that, you know, heaven and earth can pass away, but his word will never fail. It will never change. That's always the source mm -hmm. of wisdom that we can go through because people would change on you. Circumstances would change on you, but God's principles will always work. Love will always work. It will Faith work. will always work, you know? I like what you said. Yeah, I think that's um, important that we um, continue in our faith, you know, because we, we will be demonstrating our faith. But sometimes when people don't have faith and they don't understand the principles of faith because they don't want to work their faith. Um, and then they don't, you know, they start to realize and start to blame others. But I think we definitely need to go back, you know, um, to faith and what works. And faith does work and the love of God works. So I would like to know how are we going to embrace this change, you know, of, of mm -hmm. uh, going back before, our, you know, before the believers, our friends, you know, um, it's a lot to think about. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and I think that we've got to talk about it. Yeah. You know, and that was my next question. How are people handling change? You know, a lot of things have, have come up, you know, the way we we uh, can social socialize right now has changed. Mm -hmm. The way we do church has changed. Um, you know, just family gatherings has changed. I mean, a lot of things because we had this pandemic inserted into our lives. Nobody expected that to happen. You know, nobody expected that, but it did. And how are people handling that? How are we handling the adjustments? Um, you know, come on, y'all, help me, help me, help me talk about this. I, I'm, I'm just throwing some things out. I want to draw from you, guy. Mister, I think some of the some of the the ways that people are handling it are are good. They've adapted, like you know, technology. They've embraced technology and embraced some new uh, ways of doing things. Um, but sometimes people don't embrace change. Uh, and they don't move forward and press forward into what can be because they're so ready to go back to what was. Okay, so I think okay. that some people are not, you know, necessarily embracing change um, and, and trying to move forward. 
um, because I think it has a lot to do with the perception and it has a lot to do make this statement about fear, you know, fear of the unknown or, or knowing, you know, how to handle it or maybe fear because we don't have the necessary skill set that we need in order to uh, to be as effective as we need to be. Um, so I think some people are handling it well. I think some, you know, maybe have taken on some other um, ways, of coping mechanisms uh, of, of handling or embracing uh, the change. But I definitely think that the perception, um, having all of the knowledge that we need in order to make good decisions to move forward, we need that in order to embrace change. Okay. In, in some simplified forms, I mean, the way we, 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 Take care of business have changed. Okay. Uh, you know, it used to be person to person. Now things are done electronically. You know, the way the way a person gets paid, they used to hand you a check. Mm -hmm. At one time they handed you cash money and then they went to checks and and then they went to direct deposits and all of those things. And then money's changing. Now you got cryptocurrency. Hello. And they're developing a whole nother system based on cryptocurrency. You'd be able to buy things with cryptocurrency rather than what we've always known to be cash or even credit, uh, things of that nature. So things are always evolving and we have to educate ourselves so that because what I found is that sometimes you don't want it to change. I go back to a story with my father who uh, I can remember this very, very well because I would go to the bank with him on Fridays when I was little to cash his check. <laughs> and when his employer, he worked for the big three, he worked for GMC. And, and so when they wanted to go to direct deposit, he told them, don't, don't, no, don't direct deposit, nothing. Give me my check. <laughs> <laughs> but it came to a point where he didn't have that option any longer. OK, they gave you a period of time to adjust, to to become secure about it, to see that, hey, you can trust us with it. You can ask your friends, you know, well, how's that direct deposit working for you? You know, did they give you all your money? Were you able to get your money out? You know, because he was like, no, I want you to give me a check wow. and, and then I want to cash that check and I want them to put that money in my hands so I could see it. And then, you know, and then it went from writing checks to using debit cards, right? So change is always happening in the simplest of forms. The way food is prepared today, simplest of forms, things are changing all the time, right? Right. And, and it requires you educating yourself uh, and listen, having conversations with others as well not be afraid to have a conversation. Hey, have you tried this? Have you tried that? What do you think about this? Okay. Now, one thing I always encourage people and, and warn people about is, is, is know who you're talking to. Make sure you're talking to credible sources. You know, when we were talking about uh, music and the sources of, of where our teaching is coming from, you need to make sure that we're not drawing from the unlearned. You know, ask that next question. Well, where'd you where'd you read that at, or where'd you get that from? Oh, that's just the way I think about it. Well, no, we can't make emotional decisions. Whatever change is coming about, we can't be all emotional. That's why our foundation in God has to be in place. Our faith in God has to be in place. That He's always going to protect us. Mm -hmm. He's always going to keep uh, us from being destroyed. He's never going to leave us nor forsake us. Cool. You know, change happens um, and, and, and we got to believe that let's look for the good in this thing. And if it's not good, uh, we're going to ask God in prayer to Charlotte and say, show me what's wrong with this. You know, and, and if God says this is a good thing. I don't know about you. It's a good thing that that I can use a debit card. It's a good thing that I can uh, invest in cryptocurrency and and turn my few dollars into a lot more dollars. That, that's a good thing. It's about adding increase. Sometimes we're praying for things when we're praying to God and saying God to, you know, bless us, Lord, and all those types of things. And then, you know what happens? Change happens and we don't even recognize it. Uh, that that's the blessing that you prayed for because it's different from what you currently know. 
But when you say to God to bless you, you're going to have to embrace change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to embrace change. Okay. You got to embrace, embrace change. Bishop, I used to hear a lot of time, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mm. <laughs> and I, you know, like even in the restaurant industry, I can correlate that to that. You know, they switched over to a little handheld you know, computers and iPads. And so you place your order right there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people couldn't get with it because they were like, you know, um, they're just not fast enough in moving <laughs> with technology. And so everybody was used, you know, the order pad, you know? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I, okay. that's why I kept saying the perception, our mind has to change. Uh, you know, when we talk about embracing change and new opportunities, OK, well, you know, change is about progress, right? Now, I don't know about you, but uh, I can remember when uh, just something simple like um, uh, 45 or Gloucester there in Tupelo, when it was just a two lane street. I remember that. Yeah. Do you do you think that if it hadn't changed and we gone through the pain of change. I remember when all the construction was going on. It, you know, your car would get dirty, uh, traffic jams and all of that. But do you think that it should have stayed a two lane street with all the traffic that goes up and down this street? As I remember some years ago, they tell us they told us that over 100,000 cars sometime go up and down their street in a day. A two lane straight wouldn't have been street would not have been able to handle that. So just things like that. And, and many times change can inconvenience you. Yeah. But change is necessary in order for progress to take place. It's very necessary. I like the way, I like what you said. It's very necessary um in the way pe the I think the generations um you know of people that get stuck and they say that we get stuck, you know, okay. because we're older, but the young people to me are stuck because okay. they don't want to, yeah, like they don't want to they don't want to read instructions. You know, they, they just want to be able to do it. They want everything to be microwave. They don't want to learn how to cook. You know, they just want to go to drive through. So I think, again, that we have to, t there is some essence to teaching a foundation through all of this change that we can refer back to, you know, so that we can continue to go because we got to continue to grow, you know, um, and, and, and it's going to affect all of us, but I want us to all be in a, um, a happy place. Yeah. You know, when, when we accept these changes, you know, like some people say what worked for you won't work for me. So that's why they stay where they are, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but I love it to, you know, to be around people who can uh, provoke change and influence change so that we can teach you know, um, some of the things that, that need to change. A lot of people don't want to change because they don't want you to think that they need any help. Does that oh. make sense? Ooh. Like, so, you okay. know, um, I remember when the kids were trying to teach me how to use the, my iPhone or whatever, and I was like, I already know how to do that. <laughs> I was uh -huh. like, no, you don't. <laughs> you know, so then when they said, okay, you know, we're going to play on our phones. Let me show you how to uh, download pictures. It became um, it became very easy, uh, very engaging because they were really trying to help me instead mm -hmm. of trying to tell me that I didn't know. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Like, to imply that you don't know. I guess you need to accept that you really don't know. You know, mm -hmm. so I had to accept that, and then they were able to teach me in a fun way. And so, you know, sometimes we need to accept change and ask for help. You yes. know, along the way so that we can understand that it's going to be better for us in the long run. That's good. That's good. I mean, just like I said, change is happening all mm -hmm. of the time, all the time change is going on. And if you can be stuck, <clears throat> excuse me, and and progress is going to take place, you know, and as I was talking about my dad, that direct positive. Now it's a thing. Now everything is direct deposit now. OK, even even Social Security is direct deposit. I mean, everything is going to direct deposit and he had to accept it. And so 
a lot of lot of things with embracing change is about your attitude. It's about uh, being open and and believing for the good. Uh, I want to I want to show this here. Um, Shaw said, progress is impossible without change, and those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything, cannot change anything. And so when you think about that, you say, wow, do we want to make progress or do we not want to make progress? You know, uh, or or do am I holding on to something because because another thing you got to do to, to embrace change is have vision because I don't see anything greater than where I'm presently at. Uh, I can't see tomorrow today. I have I don't see no need for this. You know, the city of Tupelo is changing. Olive Branch is changing. Memphis is changing. This whole nation is changing. Uh, we praying for the good. You know, we're praying for the good. There's always some bad to try to enter in, uh, but we want to believe for the good and be a part of change and uh, be creative and be innovative, uh, open our mouth and not be silent. Uh, you know, there's a big thing about, you know, there's a time where where some people wouldn't vote, um, you know, but this year, I think pain caused a lot of people to say, I'm going to vote. I don't care what I got to do. And you've seen people standing out in the rain. Uh, I know I voted and I stood in line for five hours to vote, you know, and it was cold. Do you hear me? But we needed to do that in order to see some change. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one thing that, that I also want to interject is I pray that we can can come in agreement with God and believe God that pain doesn't have to be the curve for change, that we become in so much pain and so much distress that that's the only thing that pushes us to accept or do what we need to do in order for change to happen. You know? Right. I totally agree. The love of God, um, you know, for for the for his people and what he did for us, that great sacrifice that he made for us should have us wanting and desiring to be a better people. Mm. Um, when you get into your communities instead of, you know, dividing out, let's teach our people how to embrace what's coming, because just like you said, it's, it's not going to stop. You know, um, and we got to keep going forward It's because fear is going to always be with us. But if we have enough um, faith and know that God is not going to leave us or forsake us, then we can make those those changes. You yeah. know, um, he's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. Let's just do right. Why does it always have to be a a debate? OK. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. Why do I have to get in this debate about? You know, and I, and I know, Stephanie, so maybe you can help me. Why do we have to debate about taking like a shot or even going to vote? Mm -hmm. Suppose, suppose um, some great results, mm -hmm. you know, that COVID, you know, if I take this shot, I, I might not be as sick as um, some of the people are saying. But I have I've struggled, you know, with trying to convince or even demonstrate you yeah. know, that I must do this. I feel like not, you know, for my sake, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to live in the society that we're getting ready to um, go into. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a different season for all of us. And so um, help me, you know, like I'm I'm trying to be a great influencer um, yeah. just with my own home. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's hard. I, I just think, Stephanie, you have something. Come on. Yeah, I was just going to say that, um, you know, Bishop, you said something. You said that change can inconvenience you. Mm -hmm. And so the inconvenience, we have to understand and know that there has to be adaptability. There mm -hmm. has to be flexibility mm -hmm. and the willingness to wow. want to do something different. So, again, it goes back to the seat, you know, to your heart it goes back to your desires. 
um, because we are faced or presented with change every single day. And so to answer your question, Charlotte, and something that Bishop teaches is that there are four dimensions of change. So we got to know what to change. First of all, we need to know why. So, you know, we always talk about explaining, you know, telling people why we need to do this or giving some background knowledge, wisdom. God says, if we lack wisdom, let us ask for it. And so um, explaining to people why, why, why they need to do this, why this would be a good idea, why we should embrace this. And then when, how, you know, and so understanding and then telling people what they need to change. So it's just a matter of the teach, the teach, the teach, you know, one day at a time, one step at a time. Uh, we say that a lot. You know, you don't eat the elephant all in one day. And so right. you develop daily. And so it's a process. And people have to understand and begin to embrace their process. But one, we definitely need wisdom and we got to be more adaptable. That's one of the skills um, that we need in order to move forward to embrace change. That was the whole thing. How are people dealing with embracing change? Mm -hmm. um, and so we got to have the right knowledge. There has to be the right information out before people so that they can understand and get a clear understanding. Scripture tells us that in all oh. that I'm getting, get an understanding. Yeah. And so if you can't apply what you don't know and you can't operate in what you don't understand. Mm -hmm. So all, all of these things are truth. And, and I, I'll go back to the to the thing that we mentioned just a little while ago. We got to love one another. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm not doing it for myself, I'm going to do it for somebody else. When I found out, even if I have the faith of a, of a giant and I and I believe that nothing can touch me or harm me. But the fact that I could be a carrier of something that could damage someone else. Mm -hmm. And and then also leadership isn't always about what I can do is what I should do in order to influence others to do what they need to do. Right. You know, um, and so it and, and it goes down to love, you know, um, loving one another, uh, loving our neighbors. We love ourselves. And one of the things that I wore is I wore my mask proudly. I had on one of my masks. I care. I wanted people to know I care about you. That's why I wear this mask. You know, it was an inconvenience. It was hot sometime. Uh, you know, fog my glasses up sometime. I couldn't see out my glasses trying to keep the mask on where it was. It was a, it was an inconvenience, but I still had that branded on there. I care, you right. know, I care. And that was a message that I wanted to go out and change is about caring. You know, change is about wanting to see progress, you know, and it can be an inconvenience. It can, uh, even be painful. Mm. You know, when, when you're going away from something that you really enjoy, um, you know, something that really benefited you, right. something, whatever, you know, as I said, we're getting older. There are some things that I love to eat. But if I've gotten older because my body has changed, I cannot right. eat those things anymore. Right. Do you hear me? Right. And because my body has changed and when I go against it. And I want to do it anyway because I just want it. I just want it. Got to have it. And and but my body responds in a negative way and says, mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Exactly. "The season for that is over." Amen. You know, the yes, time for is. that is over. And so I think change, embracing change, also involves some maturity. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. some maturity. And uh, it also involves when you're talking about sometimes uh, because change can also present frustration. But I want to encourage everybody to be patient. Have more conversations. Yeah. Ask that next question. Why do you feel like that? You know, ask them why, you know. And then as, as Stephen Covey teaches us, seek to understand before wanting to be understood. That's it right there. You know, ask them, well, why do you feel that way? You know, and give them a different perspective. Because sometimes a person just needs a, another perspective that they might be able to see the benefits of change. That's that why factor. You know, that's that why factor. Um, and so it, it takes patience, too, when we are in the midst of change, when changes is, is happening. Y'all know sometimes, as I said, getting older, 
uh, just had a birthday. Uh, you know, sometimes it, it's pride to the Charlotte where you, where you think, you know, oh, I can do that. You know, I can do that. And your body tells you, mm -mm, mm. You, you, you don't do that no more. Sit down, you know, you know, <laughs> sit down somewhere. You know, and, mm -mm, that ain't happening. It's your, it's, it's your brain, you know, your willingness to do, but that body kick in and be like, girl, what are you doing? <laughs> to, just to but, let y'all know, like, even when you're healing, you know, yeah, um, your attitude toward healing and your faith has a lot to do with your recovery. Mm -hmm. And so I was going to call myself, you know, going out, walking, doing it, doing great because in my mind and my willingness, I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. I overdid it and my okay. body just, yeah. So just, you know, just as you say, your attitude and taking your time to doing things, you know, don't frustrate yourself, frustration, fr frustrate yourself doing it. Mm -hmm. It takes one day at a time to handle change. And I wanted to go back, you know, when um, during the pandemic and us coming back into work with the children okay. um, at MAP, we incorporate um, some high standards of, you know, policies from, you know, the Head Start performance guidelines. And so we had to incorporate, you know, that with our four and five year old children. Really, I have about two, three year old kids in my class. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to say that, um, coming back into the classroom, what we were thinking, uh, wanted to perceive, you know, just because we deal with a lot of um, low income families, which I was a low income family at one, you know, yeah. and um, that doesn't have anything to do with a child learning. Okay. Okay. Um, you have, you can have a lot of resources and bring the child into an environment and ready to teach. And those kids came in and adapted well. Wow. Do you hear me? When wow. I tell you hand washing is a procedure and they washed hands and did it step by step, wow. they sit there, they count, they sing the happy birthday song. <laughs> These kids are adapting to change. When you are a parent, it's important that when you, the way you handle change, you mm -hmm. know, they are going to adapt to the way, you know, they change or handle wow. change. So That's it's so very excellent. important to demonstrate, you know, with a great attitude, um, change, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that's uh, the CDC guidelines. You know, we had to demonstrate to the children how to wash hands, how to cough in their sleeve, mm -hmm. uh, how to stay, you know, social distance in mm -hmm. the classroom. When I tell you that they do it, they wow. do it well. So they're wow. adapting, you know, to this new um, change that we're seeing going throughout you know, the world. I mean, it's not, I don't think it's going to let up anytime soon, mm -hmm. um, but I do pray, you know, that God give us the, um, the, the way, you know, show us the way to adapt, show us the way to lead and guide our children um, to all knowledge and understanding. They, they can do it. If mm -hmm. we can do it, they yeah. can do it. You know, and if yeah. God is continuing to have us here, then we're going to have to do it. Yeah. 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 And we can yeah. set the stage, you know, um, with these three year olds and the kids that are that are coming. But there we got to um, figure out where, the, where, you know, the ball is being dropped, so to speak. Okay. You know, you can tell. Um, but but I just wanted to say that the kids, when you do it with a good attitude, they adopt to change. They really that, do. That's they a adapt. nugget right Am there. I saying it right? Adopt, adapt. Um, they do good. Yeah. Excellent. Stephanie, come on. You chomping at the bit. <laughs> no, it, it, you you saying it right, sis. Adapt. I think that that's so good. Your attitude. You know what I'm saying? Your, your, the way you see it, the way you approach it. You know, mm -hmm. um, we used to teach that um, attitude is about 85% of how you respond. Oh, yes, you know, yes. so it's about, you know, yeah, things happen all the time, but oh my God, your attitude your attitude is going to determine your altitude. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so we got to think positively. We have to think uh, that the glass is half full. And I know that we can be positive and, you know, go through our things and stuff like that. And, and But again, it's the way that you handle it. It's, right. I think that that's so powerful. You know what I mean? And so, you know, if you overcome in your mind, mm -hmm. you can overcome. 
You know, your body yeah. is going to follow. <laughs> it is about your mind. And it so is. that's so good. Changing your mind. Like Bishop said, we put the quote up. I think his name Shaw. If you yeah, jo George Bernard Shaw, yes. Yes. Come on. If you don't change your mind, you cannot change anything. And that is where wow. it starts. The battle is won and lost in the mind. In the mind. So as yes. a man think it, so is he. Okay. That is about what you what you have going on in the environment of your mind. And then I wanted to say this too, Bishop. You said that um, change involves vision. And mm -hmm. so some people say, you know, well, I don't have a vision. Well, if you do not have a vision, get with somebody who can see. It. Get with yeah. somebody who got a vision. It's yeah. okay that you don't know your vision right now. I was like that at one point in time. I was like, I don't know. So I got with Bishop. Whatever his vision is, that's my vision. Okay, you will begin to see yourself in a larger vision. The vision that you have for yourself, it will begin to unfold when you connect with vision. And so that's a powerful thing. Okay, so get with someone who can see, who has a vision, you know, and make sure that it's from God. Can we just right. stop right there for just a All moment? Right. Right. All right. Let's make sure that the vision is from God and that we're not chasing rabbits, as Bishop say. <laughs> okay. So. That's good. <laughs> okay. So we've been talking about embracing change today and how our people handling change and change is happening all of the time in so many different types of ways. And and as as we were saying, I wish Charlotte that you could. I know it's probably not legal to do. But just if there was video footage of the kids doing what they need to do just to show some adults and mm -hmm. put in the put in the in the in the uh in the quotes or whatever, if oh, children yeah. can do it, we ought to be able to do it yes. too. Yeah. <laughs> they do it well, Bishop. I had to tell when I was like, Can you sing your song a little bit faster? You know, because sometimes we'll get, you know, like uh, they, you know, back and forth in between and they singing. Uh -huh. You can you can kind of be like, OK, so as a monitor, I used to go in the classroom as a T.A. That okay. means like your technical assistant. I monitor the kids and how they hand wash. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going back in as a teacher and I'm saying that these teachers that were before them were mm -hmm. teaching this technique. And so now that they are four years old, they have mastered it. So mm -hmm. I think hands, you know, my hands go up to the ones that really took on the technical assistant, took it serious so that mm -hmm. they can continue to follow those procedures. Because now we were doing that five years ago. So now that COVID has hit and the pandemic, well, we're just reiterating what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people say, you know, oh, we were no. If you was a a black mama or you were raised by a black grandmama, you've been washing your hands. <laughs> you a little bit of Clorox in that in that uh, dishwashing detergent. Because <laughs> you didn't you didn't eat. You didn't go in the refrigerator. Mm. You didn't do none of that until you washed the hands. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's just a lot of things that we as a culture have been doing. And sometimes we don't give ourselves meaning enough credit to keep doing it, you know, until somebody else has to validate us to do it. Why do we do that? Well, I, I think a lot of times it's because there are many voices that have gone out into the land and you got to know from whence these voices have come. It just takes one critic to begin to insert something in there. Right. Yeah. And, and then someone grabs a hold to it and repeats it. And someone who is not grounded properly, lacks faith, lacks wisdom, lacks understanding, lacks knowledge, runs with a lie or untruth. OK, we can see that in this ways. We, we know it's changed so much uh, when we think of communicating now. People will post something on Facebook before they will call someone sometimes because they don't know a person will look at their Facebook before they, they get to their phone sometime. Yeah. And not only that, if you got 5,000 friends and you've got, they've got 5,000 friends, you could reach a hundred thousand people, amen, in a matter of seconds through a tweet or through a, a Facebook live or a Facebook post. Okay. And it's changed uh, communication. Some people abuse it. Some people say things without the right uh, right foundation of truth. Okay. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that go on that is not good. And there's a lot of things that are good. 
you know, and I just think that we got to have conversations with people uh, when we know people that uh, are not taking this new uh, means of communication, this new means of, of assimilating information and they're abusing it. Many times somebody knows that person that, that that's doing that. And we need to be responsible enough and say, hey, let's not say that. Let's not do that. Uh, let's make sure this is kept for good. Mark Zuckerberg admitted, he said that it it has taken on something that he never intended for it to take on. He said it became so much bigger than him. OK, it went public. It has become in some forms a monster, but in some forms it's bringing great joy. It's connecting people uh, that that have lost touch with one another is bringing people together is sharing some good times and all of that. But then you have some people with an unrenewed mind uh, or, or just simply, uh, and I say this respectfully, not being disrespectful to anybody, but just are ignorant and they're doing things to harm people rather than help people. And, and, um, and he says it, it grieves them sometimes, you know, he's a very, very, very wealthy man now. Yeah. But but I heard when he said that, he said it took on something I never intended for to take on and is used for reasons in some instances that uh, I never wanted to be used for. But it's bigger than him now, you know, and, and one of the things that we got to make sure that we know and understand that life is bigger than all of us and the source of life is God. It is. If we'll go to the creator of the thing, the creator of the things knows the purpose of why he created the thing he created. And that's something that we got to go back and drill into the hearts of people, whether it be the three-year-old, the 10-year-old, the 15-year-old, the 25-year-old, the 40-year-old who don't have a sense of purpose, don't understand why they exist. And thank you, Dr. Miles Monroe, who taught us that uh, where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. When you don't know why you exist and have a, an identity crisis, anything that could be good, you'll use it for wrong reasons. It could be money. It could be communication means. It could be a lot of different types of things. Money isn't evil, but the love of money is. Mm -hmm. And if you're and if you don't have a sense of purpose, you will you will use money for wrong reasons. Uh, uh, you'll use it to to intimidate people, all different types of things. Y'all know we want to get all the way into that, but 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 there's good and there's evil, and you're either gonna yield your members to righteousness or unrighteousness, and we gotta have some conversations about that, you know. And so, in order to embrace change, um, I think we gotta go to the source, and we must have vision. Um, vision is seeing your tomorrow today is the will of God identified. Once we stop knowing the will of God, then we can get into abusive situations and we can fear change. Uh, I thank God for the change he's bringing forth in my life. The Bible even tells us we have need of change. We are to go from faith to faith and glory to glory. That denotes change. Okay. Where faith is presence, change is always happening. OK, be yeah. transformed by the renewing of your mind. That is change, change that cannot be reversed. And so, you know, the Bible is all about change. Uh, Jesus came uh, that 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 we won't be lost, you know, that all would be saved, mm -hmm. redeemed back to God. And our lives could begin to change uh, for the intentions of God once again. So there has <laughs> to be vision. There must be vision. Yes. You know, seeing you tomorrow today, knowing the will of God, seeing something greater than where you're presently at and make sure that it's pleasing to God, you know, and mm. then you don't have to fear change. You can you can you can intercept change that's 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 not good and accept change that is good. Right. OK. I like what you said, you know, you know, without vision, you know, and it tells us that, I, you know, that our people perish. Yes. But um, in our family dynamics, we need a family vision, too. You know, we, we do have a, a family vision. And that's one thing that my father, he would call call those meetings <laughs> and have a family meeting, you know, and 
he would sit us all down and he said, you know, we have to do something within our family. And we would make these visions about businesses and, you know, uh, ministries. And, you know, it's just um, with girls and, and one, one boy, it was always this thing about, you know, um, wanting to start, you know, wanting to start a business. And some, some of us are business minded, but some of mm-hmm. us are, have, our character hasn't <laughs> developed into the business piece. Okay. I got you. So, um, so sometimes you can be um, in preparation is what he used to tell us. We're all in a process of preparation. And when one yes. thing happens, it's going to be like a domino effect. He said, you're going to watch it. He said, but you're going to, most of all, you're going to live it. So you're going to live your vision while you're thinking about it. You're going to be living it. And so I just wanted to say, you know, um, our family, you know, needs to have a vision also. Um, and, and, and then we will know what our purpose is. And so um, it's very important that we change, you know, in our character to meet that, you know, those goals too. And I think that's where we get stuck. Yes. You know, I can, you know that's absolutely yeah. truth. And, and that, 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 that forces you to embrace change. Mm-hmm. Uh, because character has to be developed. It does. And it can rub against all of your little idiosyncrasies, all your little attitudes, all your little reasoning for why you behave the way you behave, what you want to do. You know, when you start talking about uh, uh, being compassionate and forgiving, and man, you can find a whole lot of reasons not to forgive someone, but that's not the character that God would have us to have. Right. And it will hold you up and cause you to be denied mm-hmm. access to all the blessings of the Lord, you know, even cut you it's off true. from God, just being in unforgiveness, you know? So, uh, but our why, we got to know why, and we got to know that what the promises are, what the outcome of this change will look like. Mm -hmm. And I think that we got to do a better job with that when we're talking about change. Uh, We got to encourage people of, okay, it's okay that we're we're another day older, another year older. Let me tell you how good of that. I'm wise than I've ever been in my life. Okay. Things I can't do physically, I've been blessed enough to pay someone to do. That's a blessing. You know what I'm saying? I do other things with my myself now. You know, rather than the physical, uh, I learned that even in the workplace, I wasn't always to be a laborer. You know, the people who get paid the most are the people that think. You're you right. Know, people who think are the ones that are worth the most. Mm-hmm. And so as you get older, praise God, you should be expecting and drawing on your highest return upon your life because you are a wise woman. You are a wise man. OK. And when you know those things, you you re, you respond to change differently. OK. And uh, it attracts something different into your life. But if you are out of have an attitude and you're aggravated about getting older, or you stuck. I can't be 58 still trying to act like a 30 year old. You know, I'm still running around in gym shoes and 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 and. and T-shirts open and and all of that would you know because you know, I'm stuck because I didn't feel like I, I didn't live my, my Ooh, best life Lord, all Lord. that type of stuff, man. You know what I'm doing? I'm denying myself mm. the 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 effects of change because I did not apply myself. If I would apply myself as I've come into this season in life then I could also be drawing from the benefits of all of this change that have taken place. And so, you know, <laughs> it's, no, it's, no, no. it's things. So let's, let's hit this cause we only got a few more minutes and then we, we I want to talk about this a little bit more on next week because we get into the dynamics of what helps us embrace change. And, and that's this, you gotta have faith. You gotta have faith. Where, where there's vision, it also requires faith. faith okay, you got to believe in God's ability to be God, and faith requires agreement, and courage, and commitment, and obedience. And then, when there's faith, Second Corinthians five uh, seventeen tells us we walk by faith and not by sight. Five seven, I'm sorry, we walk by faith and not by sight. And that word walk means 
to make progress, mm -hmm. to make progress. So if we don't change our mind and embrace change, it is impossible for us to have any type of progress. And the thing I want to leave with, and, and I'll let you guys have your closing remark, when you are renew the mind and embrace the, the change and create new possibilities, you also create a man, a life that has victory in the face of adversity. Mm -hmm. Victory in the midst of adversity, unfavorable Amen. situations, unfavorable circumstances, yes, when you yes. learn to embrace change, okay? When you're not in a box, when you're not stuck, when you know what God's intentions are, and just because it's coming a different way now, Ooh. okay? Yes. Doesn't mean that uh, uh, it's not coming. It's just coming a different way now. Okay, it's kind of like that 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 gentleman who who still wants to work hard with his hands when you should be working hard with your mind now, so you can have long life. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. But you didn't convert the energy. <laughs> So yeah. victory in the midst of adversity, uh, unfavorable situation and, and circumstances. And unfavorable doesn't always mean bad. It just means there's some resistance. Change has to take place. It has to. Okay. So listen, I'm done. I want to get those out there. You guys give your closing comments and suggestions out there. I just wanted to say that when Charlotte was talking about the children and about how they had learned to wash their hands and how that stayed with them, it stuck with them. There are some some things that we have learned that were wrong, um, mm. that were taught to us um, out of just not knowing that the intentions and the motives were good for those that were teaching us. But we have learned some things that were just not right. Right. Or there was a better way. Mm -hmm. Can we say that? There's mm -hmm. a better way. And so as we uh, embark upon this journey of embracing change, I have had to learn for myself that I have had to unlearn some things and begin to embrace the new things that I have learned, the new revelation, the new wisdom. Um, and so understanding that we got to unlearn so that we can learn my closing statement. That's good. Charlotte, we um, got two minutes. Yeah, just glad to be here talking about change because we are the change and our children need to see change in us to, mm -hmm. you know, to forego their future. So thank you for a great, you know, lesson on today. Amen. Awesome. Yeah, we we are always creating atmospheres and environments for change, whether it be good or bad. We're always influencing someone. So thank you guys as we've been talking about embracing change on the day. And again, I want to put up uh, this quote by uh, Shaw that says progress is impossible without change. And those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. So it begins with the renewing of our minds, yeah. accepting and embracing it. And then we can we can then make adjustments, become adaptable like the babies did, like the little people do. Adapt. Adaptation is a part of change. OK, mm -hmm. and it can be good. It can be good. We don't have to accept negative change, but we can embrace positive change. And where there's vision and faith, there's progress. Amen. So listen, that's our time this week. God bless you. Thank you all for listening and, and joining. And those are going to hear this in the future. Remember, you can always go to uh, our YouTube channel and get all of the archives of all of the things we've talked about over the last uh, six, seven, eight months. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. So please, please share, share, share on your Facebook page and Periscope yes. and all those good things. And uh, also uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's free. It's free. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you guys for all of your wisdom and uh, sharing your life with uh, all of those that are listening. God bless you. We'll see everybody next week. This has been Life Lesson Live with the crew where conversations birth new seasons.